Thanks, Di, and good evening, everyone. Um, so this is um, the fifth in the sa safety seminar sessions, um, the third uh, given by me. And what we're going to focus on tonight is uh, skills refreshing. Uh, I'm going to cover the open circuit version. Uh, so what we're going to cover tonight, or what I'm going to cover is br very briefly the incident background, a little bit about COVID-19 uh, and this all forms part of the early season preparation. Uh, um, so we're going to focus very much on the, the diver with a little bit about the instructor uh, and then not so much branch officers and dive managers, but there, there are representatives of that here. So um, the, the concept of early season diving incidents is a long, well-established one. Um, and so what, what the SSC have looked at for many, many years is reporting on diving incidents um, and, and have done for over 60 years now. And uh, until 2019, the, the preceding five years, we'd seen a decline in the, what might be considered the, the normal early season incidents uh, and a movement to later in the year. What we saw in 2019 was a more or less a reversion to the, the previous indication of um, the uh, quite significant peak in late April, early May, and into June um, that um, is not as, quite as high as it is in the summer months when you would expect a lot of diving to be going on. Uh, but 2019, we saw a reversion to that. In addition, what we looked at was um, the the number of serious incidents in all, each of those figures. So the figures for May and August that overall are broadly comparable with each other, but not representative of the actual amount of diving that's going on. Uh, and what we saw for the the two more serious type of incidents, that's DCI incidents and fatalities, that they represented about 41% of the reported incidents in May of that year, whereas it represented only 18% of what we saw in August. And, and that can be reasonably um, worked out to represent uh, that there is more diving going on in August, consequently there are more incidents. But those incidents are less serious because people are dive fit or practiced in their skills and therefore are able to, any minor incidents can be resolved without serious injury. Uh, and so on the back of that, um, this year we've been significantly promoting the importance of a return to uh, diving activity, um, not least because of the added impact of the reduction in our diving uh, due to COVID-19 and, and the restrictions that have necessarily been in, imposed on that. Uh, and what it represents, any break from any activity, is a, a certain degree of skill fade. Um, uh, and in relation to us as divers, in particular, that the first consideration is that um, your qualification level has a significantly contribute contributory factor to that. Uh, so much so that at entry level, where you've learnt the basic foundation skills, but not necessarily cons having consolidated them, that those skills will fade so much quicker. Whereas more advanced divers with hundreds, if not thousands of dive experience, the, those skills will fade slower because they're more ingrained. Um, and not only that, but they will be recovered quickly. So the, this session is not going to be about this is what you must do. It's about identifying either what's right for you or if you're an instructor helping someone to come back identify what their skills were beforehand and what they're likely to be now. Um, 
uh, and equally it has a, an effect on any instructors amongst us um, in the first and foremost we're divers so it will affect our skills uh, in a similar way um, but also when we so we need to bring our diving skills back up to appropriate diving standard to support the diving that we want to do but as and when we are going to be teaching those skills we need to bring them back up to demonstration quality again um, and, and consider the skill and the student level in terms of what we're trying to do whether or not it is supporting people in their early return to diving or picking up to train people onto a further skill um, where your starting point may need a degree of more of a degree of refreshing than it does currently so looking at core skills um, the, the the fundamental that personal diving skills are, are is that of buoyancy um, and it's it's core to everything that we do and so importantly we need to be able to uh, pitch it at an appropriate level um, so the starting point for um, an entry level diver is uh, for ocean diver we've set it at plus or minus two meters uh, that's the absolute minimum um, and it's fine to target skills and your personal skills higher than that um, but it, as you progress through the diver grades and into technical then the, the fine tuning of that buoyancy becomes increasingly more important not least when it applies to uh, the ability to maintain uh, you know an, an accurate depth profile whilst decompressing so that it doesn't become um, you know, so the ultimate aim is uh, advanced diver stroke technical where your objective is plus or minus 0.3 meters um, you know virtually no variation at all um, and so how do you identify that well this, it should be integral to your initial training but one of the reasons that the buoyancy and trim workshop was introduced was not because that initial training was in any way flawed but to address a natural skill fade once people leave that the, that initial level of training and to underpin more advanced skills so that once you've left sports diver and you're going on to accelerated decompression for example where that you, you are you require gold standard as an entry level then the buoyancy and trim workshop was there to provide a, um, a refresher to an extent but to really hone people's buoyancy skills and not just the buoyancy but it starts from being properly weighted in the first instance uh, and so our diver training program for a number of years now has included weight checks at each separate diving grade to reinstate that and the ability to remove a weight belt either from yourself or a buddy for similar kind of reasons um, and also importantly um, looking at your trim in relation to uh, your buoyancy control so having a buoyancy standard where your trim is uh, in place but your it causes you to be head down or feet up at any particular point then you you need to be able to adjust that so that you're not being dragged down by your feet or anything like that and, and it also is about making sure that you are properly have proper buoyancy control so that you don't when you stop finning sink or float up you should when you stop finning you should stay in the same position so it's about fine-tuning that and if you're looking for guidance on how to specifically refresh people's skills or on anything like that you could do worse than checking out the, the contents of the buoyancy and trim workshop or asking uh, you know, if you're uh, 
a newly qualified ocean diver from six months ago asking your instructor to run you through that as a, a reminder of what you've already done. Um, uh, and then some of the other core skills go hand in hand with that uh, and always useful to um, practice it once again. Mass clearing is um, another essential skill and it's not because somebody's going to kick your mask off but it's it's useful if you get that small leak. Um, but as you go through these skills, worthwhile thinking about it depending on your level. Um, so dive leader, advanced diver should be able to do these all of these skills from a neutrally buoyant position from the start. An ocean diver might need to kneel down initially just to refresh the skills so that you're stable. But the ultimate aim should be able to do the skill without stopping what it is that you're doing. Um, similarly, finning follows on to be effective in your finning. Your buoyancy control, control needs to be right in the first place. Um, but one of the problems with finning uh, is that you can feel what you think you're doing, but it may not actually reflect what you're actually doing. So for any of this, using your body, whether it be an instructor or just another diver, is get them to look at it and you reciprocate by asking them uh, to, to do the skill and, and allow you to give feedback. Uh, familiarity with your equipment is um, that probably prior to COVID for the experienced divers amongst us, the, the most common instance of us realizing that we need to reassess our equipment is when we move from the UK to a nice warm tropical location when you try and inflate your BC by pressing where your bright dry suit button used to be uh, and you're not in a dry suit so you've got to adjust that and it takes only a few minutes to adjust it but it does require that adjustment uh, but with the enforced break that a lot of us have had it's something that we all may need to refresh and, and how quickly it comes back will come back depending on very much our past experience um and then our body support um you know the the lack of interaction that we've had with other people over the last 12 months um may get us out of the habit of that person-to-person -person interaction so at the very least uh, we need to reassert our awareness of the other person that's around us uh, and make sure that we are able to maintain good body skills and where appropriate good leadership skills as well um, and then the, the transition elements the again it relates to buoyancy control but the use of a shot line um, so uh, there is a wide range of ways that you can utilize a shot line. So in initial diver training, it's very much a, a fixed point of reference that you rely on holding on to to give you that security during the descent. Um, but as you progress on, it be, it, you're encouraged to have a more loose grip around the shot line so that you're using it as a a vague reference and then transition on to a visual reference onto it so that you can use it as a measure of how you're descending but just visually orient it onto it and adjust your buoyancy as, as you progress down or indeed up it. Uh, and then the use of reels either on the bottom or uh, as a, a use for DSMB follows a similar process. Um, but if you think about when you are the person holding the reel, your body is normally visually orientating onto you. Uh, or if it's a less experienced diver, they maybe want to just put a, a finger around, the, a, a looped finger around the line as, just above you as you reel in, in or reel it out. Uh, and then emergency skills. In normal circumstances, these are very much rarely used. Um, but uh, in the context of 
uh, COVID-19. They're even less rarely used because we simply haven't been going out anywhere near as much. Uh, so always worthwhile uh, taking the opportunity, not necessarily right from the start, refresh everything, but build into your dive plans the opportunity to practice things like alternate source or initially just familiarity with your uh, buddy's releases and how to find their alternate source should you need it. Um, not necessarily practicing AS Ascents um, and, until the, you know, the, the very end of a dive uh, and in the same way just getting used to the, the handling of controls and positioning on control point lift uh, and then towing um, the, just take the opportunity if you surface a little bit away from the shore you've got to swim back to the shore so agree with your buddy beforehand um, you know just to refresh my mind in my mind those skills um, make an arrangement to tow your buddy a short distance back to shore just to get the positioning and, and angling right and the, the important thing here is once you're under the water the risk of covid transmission is very very small if, if impossible um, but on towing then there is a small potential risk. So following the COVID guidance that's online, um, as you can see here, see here the rescuer um, keeping their mask and regulator in place, uh, but also the buddy keep doing the same so that you're remaining in your individual self-contained bubble uh, to help keep each other safe. Um, likewise, CPR practice, it's not something that uh, very many of us get the opportunity to practice for year, real, thankfully. Um, so we don't formally require currently uh, annual refreshes or anything like that. Instructors generally are teaching it on a, a fairly regular basis anyway, so we're getting their refreshes. But, um, worthwhile if you have the opportunity to practice your CPR skills uh, and familiarity with all two equipment and increasingly uh, the use of AED and, and so on. Um, practical rescue management is a little bit more difficult currently whilst we're slightly uh, controlled in the, the size of groups that we can have. But there are things that you can be doing um, just to refresh your management expertise where, where you have it, utilising things like the uh, synopsis in the incident report to consider first and foremost how any particular incident may have been prevented uh, in advance uh, so that um, you avoid it that incident happening in the first place and you don't need any of those emergency rescue skills but also how you might intervene to resolve the situation as it develops um, you know when it's become a full CBL and need for um, resuscitation and that kind of thing <clears throat> so it helps put things into context um, and then extended skills um, particularly in support of decompression, stroke technical diving. Uh, so, so the ability to plan and organize run times and, and hit those run times uh, during the course of the dive. So as you, you meet your decompression plan, um, if you're using different decompression mixes, then gas switching becomes an important skill. Um, and that's something that you can practice with single cylinder diving just by switching you're planning to switch at a particular point in the dive with your um, you know in agreement with your body so that they don't get concerned that something's going wrong uh, where you plan to switch at a, a particular point in time to your alternate so it's all to your pony cylinder and then switch back again afterwards so that your configuration is back as it was uh, and then your decompression management, and this comes back partly to um, your buoyancy control again, being in a position to control your buoyancy, 
to maintain your positioning um, and not to deviate significantly from the, the fixed depth, depth that you're supposed to be at, uh, but also find uh, a you know, reference point for doing that. So if you're coming up a shoreline, then it's relatively easy to do. If you're on a shot line or a DSMB, then how much of that do you manage by physically holding on and relying on the buoy to keep you at um, no deeper than you, you're actually in? Uh, or do you visually orientate and make sure that your buoyancy is properly adjusted to hold you there without the need for finning or anything else? Um, and then any overhead environments, if you are trained to do that, um, I put ice diving in there uh, simply because it's been pretty cold in recent nights. But uh, any overhead environment, if you're trained to do it, requires, again, significant discipline and your skill levels to be up standard. Uh, and then um, CCR does similar. Um, but Fran's going to cover that in a little bit more detail. In, in um, so the next slide looks like it's going to have to sequence a little bit. So uh, in, in terms of skill practice, the, we've already covered the need to consider the level and, and look at our personal skills. Uh, and that buoyancy is very much the core of that, uh, including things like mass clearing, but buddy support skills are, are equally important. Uh, you know, this remains a buddy diving sport, and so all of the aspects that relate to that are important. Um, and the SMB skills for the for anybody beyond entry level uh, are increasingly important. And and the the important message to add on to the back of that is to to plan to practice those skills shallow shallow initially. Um, that that may be that um, you know for a more experienced diver, um, you don't necessarily need to do it on a platform uh, or anything like that. You could do it on the shot line. It it's not beyond the bounds of the capabilities of an experienced technical diver to just slow on the descent and do as well as doing your bubble check do a couple of skills practices, show that, demonstrate to your body that your buoyancy control is at an appropriate standard to allow you to stop at that point and then progress on with the dive. Whereas um, less experienced divers, more skills to catch up on, may need to initially start on a platform uh, or a shallow ledge or something like that before and re those skills before committing to a dive. Uh, and then limit any challenges that you may have. Um, so avoid currents, avoid really poor visibility, um, avoid bad weather, lots of waves, rough conditions, all of that kind of thing. And much harder to do is avoid significant cold water. Um, so Water is building up nice and warm, uh, but it's still uh, in a lot of areas around the UK under 10 degrees. So you need to go, go cautiously uh, and build those skills progressively. Um, and then from an instructor's point of view, then you need to do all of those same things in, in checking your own skills uh, before you set out to teach. But also importantly is to encourage both your students and other divers to promote uh, skills practice in a similar way to this. And uh, the video for this will be online um, within a few days. And so you can either signpost your students and other divers to that. Or um, what I may do is make this presentation available in the way that we did with uh, the preparation um, slides for instructors to use in their own club. Um, but also looking at provide providing feedback and, and pointing to progression for any of the 
people that you're giving the benefits of your instructor skills uh, and signpost for ongoing developments, whether that be for um, ocean divers progressing on to sports divers or sports divers progressing on to ADP or dive leaders progressing on to the instructor route or into technical or whatever. And, the, and there, there is always more for all of us to do how long you've been doing this. And in support of all of that, I'm sure most of you will have already seen uh, the preparation for return to diving, which this session forms part of. And underpinning it, it, it still um, you know, in the current climate is the COVID guidance. 